Hey everybody, I am very excited to announce the next summer edition of the Knowledge Graph Technology Showcase. Now, if you missed the first showcase, this was done in the winter months. I will link the playlist down below if you wanna go and check that out. And in that showcase, we focused on some of the top knowledge graph databases out there on the market. I did an honest review and there are summary slides at the end of each of those videos. So make sure you go and check that out. This time around, I'm going to have a little bit more fun. And so what we're going to do is we're going to focus on data visualization and not just one aspect of data visualization, but we're going to be looking from how do you model the data and gather the data and do things with the data, getting it into a database and also making visualizations that you can find information from, your end users can find valuable, and I find these data visualizations incredibly useful when talking to senior stakeholders. All right, and just like last time, these are not paid promotionals in any way. I reached out to these vendors and they were kind enough to work with me on these videos. These are all going to be my honest reviews of these tools and services. And there's going to be a summary slide at the end of each video, just like last time. So the technology that we're going to be reviewing today is, there we go. All right, so without further ado, let's go get started. Off, uh, I am here today with Joe and Dan, and I am very excited. I've actually known these two guys for quite some time in various different roles that I've, I've had, um, but I also know that they have worked with a lot of uh, the publishers out there in the world and some other really cool folks. I really enjoy the way that they conduct themselves. Uh, I actually have had other podcasts where I talk about this this data therapist idea, and I made up like the, the label for that, but these guys are the ones that kind of made me think that way. <laughs> uh, so if you guys want to introduce yourself, Joe, do you want to start? Sure, yeah, I'm Joe Elmendorf. I'm an information architect with the Understanding Group. Yeah. All right. Uh, and I'm Dan Cooney, an information architect with the Understanding Group. So let, tell me a little bit about the Understanding Group, right? I, this might be something that folks that are watching this video, they might not be familiar with what you folks do. So can you just describe that for us? Yeah, so uh, at the Understanding Group, or, or Tug for show, short, we are all information architects, and uh, we are a technology agnostic consulting firm. So we don't have a, we don't, you know, we're not trying to push SharePoint or any particular kind of, of solutions. Um, we really want to help people figure out how their information places should be structured mm -hmm. to accomplish uh, their specific goals. Mm -hmm. And then uh, once we help them realize, understand uh, kind of the, the nature of their information and, and what the needs are, mm -hmm. then they can go out and, and really make an informed decision about the kind of technology that they need to implement it. Yeah, nice. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's uh, something that I definitely picked up on while working with you in a different company uh, is there. there's a lot of mess. I know you guys come up against a lot of mess, and yet you never uh, made me and my colleagues at the time ever feel like it was a mess. We knew it was a mess, <laughs> but you didn't make us feel that way. You made us feel like, okay, we're all here to accomplish a goal, and that is to get through this. <laughs> So yeah. let us do that. So I wanted to make sure, like, what are some of the um, groups that you've you've worked with? Like, you know, are you mostly dealing with, you know, folks in the finance area, people that are doing like intranet things, things that are like customer journey? Like, what are the, some of the like key things that you guys do at, at Tug? Fortune fives to, uh, you know, the city of Ann Arbor. We helped them <laughs> for a little, like their yeah. parks department. Uh, yeah. uh, helped some, you know, big publishers, uh, mm -hmm. nonprofit member organizations. Uh, but we've worked with a, a, quite a range at e-commerce, um, yeah, a surprising amount of search type tools. Yeah. Um, and then all, and then and then once we're in at a, play, a place, sometimes we end up helping them with like product development, like if yeah, they're trying yeah. to figure out like we've we need to fix this thing and they're like, oh, help us make this new thing. And so that yeah. that, that move happens yeah. now and again. Yeah, and that and that's that's a good overview, I think, of of what you're really working on is, you know, the the series of of you know showcases for this time around. We're really focused on you know data visualizations, but it's the ecosystem of of that. It's not always here's the visualization, here's how you make it fun, here's how you make it 3D. 
yeah, but there's a lot of other things that go into making that. And you have to make it make sense and it has to have good data and it has to be addressing people's concerns or, or if your end goal is to make something really sexy and cool to play with, okay, but is everyone going to find the same thing sexy and cool? Yeah. So having folks like yourselves kind of help and walk through. And again, this is where I go into that like data therapist kind of kind of mentality where there are so many different personalities. There are so many strong-willed people that can be very um, boisterous uh, and, and really kind of lead the group into a certain area because there isn't a third party to help kind of say, okay, you uh, quiet 80%. <laughs> What do you think? Let's let's listen to you for a second. And I think that coming together um, is is very difficult for a lot of companies. And and having folks like yourselves to come in and kind of help through that journey uh, to understanding even how do you identify the problem? How do you identify what we should be doing? Because a lot of companies struggle with that, and you don't want uh, the MVP uh, elephant in the room to to kind of guide it all. Because chances are. There's a problem there because of that too. That's a little part of it. And then, then we work to kind of figure out, okay, what is what is the way that we want to think about this situation, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, what is the real problem that we're actually trying to solve uh, here? Yes. Yeah. Because it's not always, very rarely, is somebody actually have the problem that they're trying to solve uh, just at hand. Because that's the hard part, right? Is yeah. understanding what is the problem. You know, I I think uh, a great analogy, uh, a great small story, I should say, uh, that, that I've come across recently. Like, what's the real problem? It's the difference between treating the symptoms versus the disease, right? And so I had uh, one, one person who was looking at a set of search results, and they said, well, I know that a lot of people search for the title of a magazine or title of a book to find something. So when they do a keyword search, it, it doesn't give them uh, perhaps that the title that they were anticipating. So it, that that was the problem, right? But then they said, so I think we should organize the search results, you know, all 10,000 pages by alphabetical order. <laughs> ah! <laughs> so that's, that's not exactly what you want to do. And, and I think that's what we all fall into. I mean, um, I've, I've done a lot of um, what's called, you know, from Pragmatic Institute, uh, how do you pragmatically think about the user? How do you pragmatically, you know, put together uh, some of these customer and user uh, problem statements? And it's so hard not to put the solution in there. The, the, it comes up that's a real intersection with the knowledge graph space mm -hmm. is the, the recognition that, um, that finding the right things to model, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's the real <laughs> kicker. Um, in some and and they're you know just like you said like some somebody might come and say well, here's what we need to do we need to model this and this and here's the set of things to work with mm -hmm. and figuring out is that the set of things to work with you know and like and I think that that's stepping back and figuring out before we even get to doing the graphing like what is uh, yeah. wh why do we want to come at it with from that angle um, and I think that 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 getting aligned about is this the right problem we're solving yeah. that that's really the the thing that we yeah. it's like a precursor to all the visualization work yeah. and that that's the that's the thing that I think that we really you know the, the we do you know the right amount of research to figure that out we kind of know how to ask the right questions and yeah. and, and I, I love working with organizations that then are going to turn around and make something look awesome and use yeah. the good visualization yeah. techniques yeah. Uh, and it's just so fun when you actually get the right ones that you're doing the yeah. right thing. Well, I mean, I think that that's a really great point because I have many videos where we're talking about where do you start if you do want to start even taxonomy or knowledge graph. And yeah. it's always scope the first problem appropriately and get the right data, right? Don't boil the ocean. You need yeah. help with that. These guys may be the ones to go talk to. Yeah, we have a, a simple way of, you know, we want to figure out what before you figure out how. Yeah. It sounds like the most straightforward thing, but oh, that how is oh, yeah. really shiny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and of the course. what just sounds so mundane, but uh, that's sort of the secret, the secret sauce to how uh, we do projects successfully and how, uh, but it, it's kind of fractal. Um, oh, yeah. It works across the whole project, but for any individual part of it, any model, 
Mm -hmm. uh, the, the whole premise of this modeling for clarity class is starting by figuring out what you want to model before figuring out how you're going to draw it or how you're going to yeah. visualize it or yeah. what tool you're going to use. And I can see that being helpful also for um, even machine learning projects uh, mm -hmm. because oftentimes uh, people talk to me and ask for my advice on, well, I want to do knowledge graph at my company. And I ask them why, and they don't have a great answer or they don't really know. And that, you know, sometimes it's just natural. Sometimes it's just difficult for people to put that into words. But I've seen more often than not, especially when they're also asking me about machine learning, they want to do the sexy thing that's just yeah. out there. It's the new thing. I want to say I have whatever. And that, does, yeah, it's it's putting the cart before the horse, right? Like, okay, do, what, what data do you have that would, you know, lend itself to graph? And what are you going to get from it? And why is graph better than any other way you can do it? You know, I have, and I'll put it up below here, or I'll put it up above here, my what is a knowledge graph? At the end of that video, again, it's only a 10 minute video, very quick and dirty way. Do you even have any data that would benefit from graph? Because it's not magic. It's same with machine learning. A lot of people think that machine learning, it's like, ding, everything's done. No, it's a lot of work and a lot of effort, and it's not cheap to get into. Uh, which is really fascinating because I think a lot of people still have a misconception that going with machine learning is cheaper and they think um, th that the machines will replace people. You still need people to train it. You still need people to tell the machine, this is what a human would think for this thing to work yeah. correctly. And so um, it's, you know, dispelling a lot yeah. of those preconceived notions. And I'm sure you find the same thing when you're starting a project. You got to get like all the junk on the table, <laughs> clear the air, and then start. Yeah. Do you find... We got to, oh, go ahead, yeah. we got to work with uh, an organization who, is, who wanted to bring in, uh, implement AI machine learning mm -hmm. uh, uh, to process all their chat transcripts. Mm -hmm. And... They were like, how do we do that? And we, <laughs> we went in and we kind of did our, our normal what before how. And we're like, in a perfect world where you had the thing that you wanted, what would you do with it? Like, yeah. let's focus on the outcomes as opposed to how yeah. to actually do it. Yeah. And then we were able to kind of score, you know, we want to be able to get this out of it. Okay, well, we need this kind of data and that kind of data. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you'd only do like a couple things out of it, but you'd need like 10 inputs. It's probably not mm -hmm. very feasible. Uh, yeah. So we were able to provide them with a, a ranked scorecard of where they should focus their efforts to get the most bang for their buck. But even just having that scorecard, I have done more of those in the machine learning side of, of my work and consulting things that I've done. That's always the most important. Um, you know, if you're doing any kind of, um, you know, full text extraction, is your full text OCR or is it XML? Because if it's OCR, you got your hands full, right? But if you have great XML, yeah. hooray, you've passed that hurdle, right? Yeah. But that simple, yeah. tiny thing, like there's a checklist you can really go through for certain kinds of machine learning problems where if you like only, if you don't pass one of those quality checks or one of those checks. Yeah, it's like a maturity it model add. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah it can just yeah. add Where so are much you more. in the process here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But I think the really most, um, uh, what's the like pleasing or delightful outcomes yeah. are when the work that we're doing reveals something about then the organization understands itself better because yeah. of the work being done. Like, yeah. oh, that's what we, that's why we want machine learning yeah. or that's yeah. why we wanted to yeah. make this knowledge graph. It's because of that. Yeah, that's what's important to us. And and maybe that's something that they're freshly realizing, you know, mm -hmm. you know, not or, or, or remembering. And then they can take action on it, right? I mean, that's the other piece is, you know, before it was uh, the the giant storm cloud of data is what I call it. Like, you don't know what's in it. You don't know who's touching it. You don't know what exactly it's doing or which systems it's used in. Uh, and it can pour on you at any time. You know, if there's a security breach, for instance, <laughs> you know, heaven forbid that those, that those things happen to you. Uh, but that's where if you have at least this almost like health assessment on whatever it is that you're trying to focus on, whether it's a project, data cleanup, you know, whatever it is, if you have 
someone to come in as a third party that really does understand it, can just work with you and ask the right questions. Like sometimes internally, you just don't know the right questions to ask. And so that's where that scorecard kind of comes about. It's not like you guys have a scorecard. I mean, there are certain general practices, like, right. you know, my example of, you know, what's your full text like, but um, it's talking to your users, talking to your customer to understand, like, what does the scorecard look like? And where are you on that already? Uh, so yeah. then they can make themselves better. Yeah, I love right. your, I love the storm cloud of data. That's great. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. I'm just yeah. imagining all the debris that gets kicked uh -huh. up in the wind. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, and if you have a security audit, you know, from the government, that's, that's more like a tornado. <laughs> like there's a calm person in the middle and that's usually the government employee and then there's the company that's like oh no <laughs> so it's, yeah <laughs> i'm up with all kinds of analogies for data that's the whole point of the channel <laughs> um, so you know what are some of the things that you would say are your passion projects that you have worked on with the company i think this modeling for clarity class that we have Mm -hmm. has been a, a passion project of ours over the past couple of years. It's been really fun to uh, see all the things we didn't think about when we were making yeah. it last year. Uh -huh. And it's been really interesting to see how different people approach uh, thinking about information and how to oh, yeah. how to visualize it and yep. communicate it. And so that's been that's been a whole lot of fun. It's it's really cool that you guys are, are doing that kind of course. So um, just as a quick plug, how would somebody find out about your class or sign up for it? Yeah, so we are um, currently signing up people for our August 21 uh, workshop. So it'll be during the month of August, so those four weeks. Mm -hmm. Put that and link we'll put in there. That in the description below so people can find it. Okay. Awesome. When you're doing this class, um, what kind of models are you working on? Are they taxonomies, ontologies, or is it more just the act of modeling information and don't worry so much about which model particularly you're working with? Yeah, yeah, actually, you're so you're hitting on one of the big reasons why, or, or, or the big focuses for the class that we, mm -hmm. we did. So many other modeling things that we would see would talk about the different kinds of models, like, yeah. you know, like, like you just said, or, or, um, you know, different modeling techniques or object models or like specific ways of going about doing, mm -hmm. you know, or, or, or here's how you do a journey map or here's how you do a wireframe, you know, whatever yeah. the whatever yeah. the issue is that's being worked on. And what we realized was that there's um, that, that that using a particular tool, a certain kind of mo model is great, but we already wanted to back up and explore the pattern of how do you think, you know, what are the activities that you do regardless of what model you're doing or you know, that would be across all the model types so that you could kind of really, because yeah. that's what we felt. We, we would find ourselves throwing away the, the prepackaged models and really <laughs> trying to think about what's, what is, um, what's the issue at hand and how do yeah. we isolate the issue yeah. so that we can really understand its, rela its, its relationships yeah. or its aspects that we wanted to focus on. So that, that um, so we don't talk about in particular <laughs> any, any specific ways of doing yeah. uh, uh, we just really try and identify those relationships. Like some people have, this is their first time giving themselves permission to model. And mm -hmm. the what they come up with when we don't guide them is mm -hmm. so often some way of showing something that I've never seen before. I've been yeah. stunned how often that's happened from somebody yeah. who hasn't modeled before is making up yeah. a new uh, way of showing a relationship. And uh, so that that openness to figuring out how to sh how to represent mm -hmm. something that is really a lot of the work in the class is kind of getting to that space where you can really and and then what's interesting is that then once you get close to doing something a certain way that has a normal way of doing it you know, yeah. normal way yeah. you can then lean into that normal way but you yeah. you you do it sort of after you found the relationship you're looking for yeah. uh, so it's nice that, that you're leading people into that and i i also have to say i used to actually teach a data modeling and data visualization course, but then like to see how they they were representing it. It was really cool. I remember one student specifically was um, modeling her diet. She caught she kept a diet diary yeah. uh, for health reasons. And so she was modeling it and it was amazing. I was like, wow, that's really cool. And, and the way that she overlaid it um, with, with other information um, just from her life was really cool. And it probably wasn't the easiest thing to read but 
It wasn't the point. The point was to understand, like, how could you model a diet yeah. outside of like, what you would traditionally see on, like, the My Fitness apps and whatever else is out there? And it was so fascinating because it yeah. was her emotions and her thinking on the page, right? Yeah. And that was yeah. what was really cool to see. Yeah. Right? Like, I want to change my eating or something, right? The whole point is that if I go use the tools that are in the world, it's like maybe those tools have already failed me. And if those are all the ones I get to choose from, yeah. how do I find a new way to relate? It's, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. that's that, And that's great when people can get out of the, well, I have to follow the rules mentality. Uh, maybe, maybe this is bad for me because I'm always preaching standards, man. Like, okay, interoperability, standards, right? But I also feel like if that's where you start, you limit yourself so much. And so break the rules, be a renegade at first, right? Throw something on the wall and figure out what works and then look at the standard and, 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 you know, learn from them and see where you got the same kind of, uh, feedback, you know, that the, uh, the standards and, and the studies out there um, are, are saying, because I think the creativity is so often lost in information architecture. And it's so sad because that's where the real special pieces happen, right? Uh, all right. So guys, if anybody is interested in working with you or finding out more about what you're all about, uh, how would they go about doing that? Yeah, you can find us uh, at understandinggroup.com. Um, we're on uh, Twitter. Wait, so we put all the contact information below if you want to go and check out what they are all up to.